So we have the electronic expansion valve and this is a stepper motor that's gonna control this valve. And here you can see the valve pin, that piston that's moving up and down. And what's cool is they got this awesome little tool here. You can put that on and you can actually see the mechanism happening. The motor, the magnetic field, that motor is gonna be turning and there's a massive amount of steps in each one of these that makes it work. But this is bi-directional, so it's gonna meter in either direction. And then there's tons of different controllers for it. But this is a very large version. This typical what we're gonna be seeing on the refrigeration residential side. But tons of different options out there. Well, this is a very popular design. Emerson actually takes a different approach with a moving hole, so to speak, where they can control how much refrigerant flows in and out of this expansion valve. And it works very well. We've talked about electronic expansion valves before, and here's another style. We have our liquid line coming in. We have our filter. There's a mesh screen inside of here. And then this is our electronic expansion valve. So notice it comes in at the side, and then it leaves out the bottom, right where this insulation is. And then here we have our distribution tubes. This is going to be where a saturated liquid vapor mixture hits the evaporator coil so we start boiling from a liquid vapor. Now, this valve is just simply a stepper motor. And in this valve right here, this is being controlled electronically. And it's being controlled by this control board here. This control board is what's controlling this electronic expansion valve. And heat pump mode, the control board opens this valve up all the way so it simply bypasses. So the refrigerant's coming through here as a liquid through these distribution tubes. It comes into the back side and this is completely open so it bypasses this. We got liquid refrigerant now going this other direction. When we start this up, you're going to see some flashing lights here and you're going to start hearing noises over here as this valve starts to find out where it's at. Here's our flashing lights, our control board. and it found its position and it's sitting over here waiting for its next call. Now, if you notice this control board over here is up inside of this cabinet, so it sounds like a problem, but really it's pretty easy. They give us this little handle right here and then we can simply slide this out and then that way we can get access to all the test points that we need so that we can service and work on this board, this control board. Now we have a call for cooling. You can hear the coil where it's starting to change temperature. You hear the blower picking up. We hear the refrigerant flowing through here. And this is the control board that's controlling it. All right, the system is off right now. And then we're going to turn it to call for air conditioning. You can see the refrigerant flowing through the circuits. Our expansion device is right here. So you can see how it's changing from a high pressure liquid coming in to a low pressure saturated mixture. And as that pressure drop, I also have a temperature drop. And you can see the coil where the refrigerant's changing state from liquid to vapor, absorbing heat. That's where that lower color blue is. Over here on the side, you can see where this is really hot right here. That's where our liquid line's coming over here to our expansion device, which is an electronic expansion valve on this unit. And where these pipes here are coming back, that is our vapor. It's just converted all, boiled it all from a liquid to vapor. All this is saturation, so it's boiled it from a liquid to vapor. And then here we're pulling that vapor, superheated vapor back, comes over to the main suction line, and that's traveling back outside to the compressor. All right, the system cycled off. We changed it to have a call for heating, so the reverse valve is gonna de-energize. Now we have a call for heating, so it's in heat pump mode. So we should be sending hot gas in here through this line, through this line. The what was the suction line is now the discharge line. We're sending hot gas into the coil and it's de-superheating, changing state from a vapor to a liquid. And it's going to be subcooling the liquid. This electronic expansion valve is going to open up all the way and allow the refrigerant to bypass. The refrigerant is going to bypass through that EEV and it's going to travel all the way through the liquid line, all the way back outside. Here you can see where this line is really, really hot because this is our discharge line. And this line is warm, but it's our subcooled liquid line. It's sending liquid back outside to the outdoor metering device. The metering device here is not being used. So we're in heat pump mode right now. We're sending our liquid in two directions. Here our check valve is closed. So our liquid refrigerant's running through our electronic expansion valve. 
Here you can see we have a temperature drop because there's condensation here. So the temperature is dropping, the pressure is dropping, and now we're absorbing heat. This outdoor coil is now acting as our evaporator coil and we're absorbing heat from outside. This electronic expansion valve is being controlled by this control board here. So here we're in AC mode. You can see the condensing coil is really warm right here. It's putting off a lot of heat. And the refrigerant's coming out as a subcooled liquid. That's a warm subcooled liquid. So even though this is warm to the touch, it's the hotter line, you can see here that it's blue or showing a lower color because it's subcooled compared to its saturation temperature that's happening right here. So that subcooled liquid comes over here to our electronic expansion valve, which is open all the way, but it also has this bypass. So right here is our check valve. The check valve is open, so the refrigerant is the same temperature on both of these. It's just bypassing that electronic expansion valve through our liquid line filter dryer and continues on where it's flowing inside. All right, so we here we can see our liquid line filter dryer. So it's high pressure, so we got high pressure liquid coming through our liquid line filter dryer and it hits this T. If we take the top route and come back over here, we see that it stops over here. This is because the check valve is closed. So that means that the refrigerant can only travel this direction. It hits this electronic expansion valve right here and then the refrigerant has a pressure and temperature drop. And right here we can see that pressure and temperature drop we had our distributor tubes and then we start distributing refrigerant through the outdoor coil and you can see here the outdoor coil is cool to the touch because it's now acting as an evaporator it's absorbing heat from outside so it's acting as an evaporator special thanks to jd kelly for making these awesome images and there's txv done here but if you just replace that txv with an exv the cycle actually works just the same